Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and got an exciting review for you today, and that is of the Violectric HPA V550 headphone amplifier and preamplifier. This is a 3000 US dollar product from, like I say, Violectric, which is kind of the uh, Buick version. You know, if you're familiar with General Motors, you've got Chevrolet, Buick, and Cadillac. If the Bioelectric series is like the Buick line to Lake People. So this is made by Lake People in Germany. This was a kind loan to me by a friend of the channel. Um, thanks to that friend of the channel, you'll be getting your amp back very soon. Uh, and I will link down below where you can buy this here in the United States from Power Holdings Inc. I have had some conversations with Arthur over at Power Holdings Inc. He has sent some items for me to review. Great guy to work with, so I have no problems recommending going to Power Holdings to buy this product or anything that they carry. So all thoughts that you are about to hear are mine and mine alone. So let's do shameless self-promotion and then get into it. Hi, I'm Wave Theory's Human Companion, and he wants you to know that your support of this YouTube channel helps keep the reviews coming. If you enjoy Wave Theory's honest, thorough style, then make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the links in the description below to sign up for the Patreon or send him a tip through PayPal. All right, enjoy the musings. I have gotten numerous requests to review the HPA V550 here, so I was excited to get this one in and listen to it, and I'm sure some of you are excited to hear my thoughts on it. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a fun one. And to kind of set the stage here, there are gonna be a couple of main points. One. This is a reference caliber product as a lot of Lake People's uh, de amplifier designs are. So this fits right into uh, their mold there in terms of being a reference caliber product. However, I will do a comparison of it. This is another really exciting part about this video to the venerable Violectric HPA V281, which has been my personal high reference amp for a good while now. And I will say that one of my main takeaways here of the V550 is that, yes, it's a reference caliber amp, but if you are coming from Violectric's venerable uh, HPA V200 series, of which the V281 is the top end model, the sound that you get from the V550 is a little bit different. It has a little bit different signature, a little bit different kind of presentation. It is not a direct upgrade from the V281. So we will do, I will unpack all of this. Why do I call this a reference caliber amplifier and how does it sound different from the V281 we will get to during the course of this video. And that could be of particular relevance right about this time, the time that this review publishes, which will probably be somewhat late in October 2023, because as of December 2023, Violectric is planning to run or to release a limited run of a HPA V281 special edition, which will be right about 2,800 US dollars, I think. And so with the V550 here at 3,000, there's probably going to be another layer of questions for many of you saying, well, should I get that new V281? Should I look around for an old V281 that's still uh, on, sa on sale on the used market? Or should I get a brand spanking new V550? So let's explore all of that together here in this review. So about the V550 itself here. The starting price on this unit is 2,999 US dollars and 95 US cents. Okay, so 3,000 US dollars, All right? Um, you can add to that uh, a $600 option for a 256 step uh, relay volume control. A nice Alps potentiometer comes with that stock $3,000 price, but step up to $3,600, and again, you get that nice stepped relay volume control if you want. It also comes with a remote control that looks something like this. This will handle um, uh, mute on and off volume control. It has uh, input selection on it, and also you can switch between the headphone output and the line output from the remote control here. So nice and handy to have this for use across the room. Um, it's a chunk of metal, basically, with a battery in it and some buttons. It's very solid. It feels nice in the hand and all of that. So it's a nice little remote control. 
The power output rating on this amp is quite robust. It peaks at its power output at 6.4 watts per channel at 50 ohms uh, impedance. Now what's weird is when you look at the uh, power output specs here on the website, and I will link down to where you can see this on Power Holding Inc.'s website, the, the volume control has a kind of symmetric pattern where the peak, I'm sorry, the power output has a kind of symmetric pattern where the peak output is at that 50 ohm impedance level, and then it's almost identical on either side of it. If you start trimming that down to a 4 ohm output, it's rated at a 700 milliwatt per channel output. And then if you ramp all the way up to 600 ohm output, or 600 ohm impedance, it is rated at right about a 740 milliwatt output. So a nearly symmetric um, curve there. Now, why is that what's going on? Vioelectric's amp design does a very good job at delivering high voltage output to high voltage loads or loads that demand high voltage. So those would be your high impedance sources, your 300 ohm sends, your 600 ohm buyers, things like that that require a large, large voltage output and large swings in voltage. They're very good. Vioelectric has long been, I should say Lake people, has long been very good at delivering those kinds of, uh, of driving power to those kinds of loads. They are getting much more proficient here. Like the V281 wasn't bad, but one of the advantages of the V550 is that it has a, a reworked uh, current output capacity. So one of the reasons we get the symmetric pattern here is because for the really low impedance outputs, like this has a good circuit to deliver high current output if needed. And so you put that together and you get that kind of triangular shaped uh, power output to, depending on load impedance. Okay, kind of an interesting thing that they do there. And yes, I do think that translates to some sound and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about build quality and do a, a, a unit tour. So as I've held it up here before, you just get that very, uh, I mean, black faceplate, that very Spartan industrial kind of uh, aesthetic that you get from Lake People slash Vioelectric. So we get this nice brushed aluminum faceplate here, which is pretty thick and well made. All right, we have big volume control knob here that is connected to, in this one, just the standard Alps potentiometer. Although again, you can get a 250 step relay um, attenuator here. Uh, we have a balance control. So if your hearing is slanted to one side or you're, you have a little bit of channel imbalance for whatever reason, you can correct right there. Uh, remote control sensor right there. Here we have the input selector button. We have an XLR input and two single-ended RCA inputs. I will show you that in a moment. We have kind of the standard Vioelectric slash Lake People way of doing things here where we have a four pin XLR headphone output for the balanced output. And then since it's a balanced amplifier, they just put a single ended 6.35 millimeter headphone output on each channel there. So these will both play in stereo, but they are just two stereo single ended outputs. Uh, power button right here. And then we have selectors to either mute on and off and then just toggle between the headphone output and the line output if you wish. Okay, um, it's an aluminum box and it's solid, right? It is well made and so forth. Let's look at the back panel. All right, here close to me, we see that we have up on top, we have the preamp slash line out outputs, both balanced three pin XLR and single ended RCA. This button right here toggles between setting these to just pure line out with no volume control or no gain control settings or to use it as a pre-out so that the volume control on this unit can make this serve as a full-fledged pre-amplifier. Then we have inputs down here. We have a one set of balanced three pin XLR inputs and then two pair of RCA single-ended stereo inputs. And then we have a full bank each here of four gain settings through um, dip switch bays there on both the input and the output. So you can adjust the input gain and the output gain independently if you wish. And then of course we have the power input there over on the right hand side. All right, um, again, it's well made, it's sturdy. The controls, like the, the volume knob has a nice tension to it, like it feels good to turn it and all of that. The buttons don't feel cheap when you push them. 
right? They, uh, everything about this exudes a pretty high degree of build quality, even though it's not like, you know, super aesthetically uh, grabbing, right? It's, it's just a Spartan industrial, get the job done kind of aesthetic. Okay. So that means that we can already go ahead and turn towards a sound quality. And to do that, we're first going to talk about test gear. So I used three headphones on this primarily uh, to do critical listening with, and those would be the Hi-Fi Men HE1000SE and the Hi-Fi Men Susvara. And then I also used the original Focal Utopia, which I have right there. Um, those were the three that by far got the most time on here. I did try it with my uh, Fostex TH900 Mark II, which has been modded with the Lawton Purple Heart Chambers and the Lawton Driver Side mods. And uh, just to see how this would handle a, a Fostex, and then I briefly checked it with like my 300 ohm Sen, which is the HD6XX, and my 600 ohm Buyer, which is the DT880. Okay, um, several DACs that I tried here. Most of the critical listening would have been used with my Berkeley Alpha Series uh, 2 DAC, which was in turn fed by a Singer SU6 DDC, um, which in turn there was fed by a, um, a Sonor Ultra Rendu uh, hardware version 1.3 streamer serving as a Rune endpoint. Okay, I would also use that same SU6 to uh, send signals to either uh, a, uh, a shit Bifrost 2 slash 64, or I have the Black Ice Audio Glass FX DAC in for review, and I would use that to uh, go into here as well. Um, that one could only do the single ended connection, so the RCA connection there. Uh, similarly, I also used my Cord Hugo 2 as a DAC for this, which was fed by its matching 2Go streamer which again was serving as a rune endpoint. In all cases, most of the critical listening would have been done either with uh, local lossless or high-res FLAC files through rune or, uh, or, or local DSD files through rune or streaming local or uh, not streaming local, but streaming uh, uh, lossless or high-res FLAC files from Kobuz. Okay, again, through rune. All right. What did I learn from that? So one of the first things that struck me about the sound of the V550 here was just how remarkably clean and quiet it is. Like I'm used to using the HBA V281, right? I have extensive time listening to a high-end Vioelectric headphone amplifier. And that one is pretty clean and quiet, the V281 is. But the, the V550 just takes that to another level. The sonic background here, or like the noise floor, I mean, we're just talking like black void kind of sonic background here. It is one of the most freakishly quiet, non-measurement chaser amplifiers I have ever heard. In fact, the level of background blackness <laughs> here does approach like a level of a topping headphone amp. I'm not kidding there, um, but it does it without all of the baggage that comes with the topping sound. Okay, so that was one of the things that like really stood out to me right away was just how clean and quiet this amplifier is. Now, Beyond that, the perceived frequency response here is a little bit closer to dead neutral than my HPA V281 is. So we have like a little bit more, like um, I've reviewed the Lake People G111 and G111 Mark II headphone amps. So those are like almost like a studio neutral kind of sound signature with just a hint of warmth and smoothness. And the V550 sounds like that more more like that to me. So a little bit more close to studio neutral with just a slight hint of warmth to it. Okay. Um, and you know, with that now, it also has a very refined sound and it's not particularly dynamic. It is not devoid of dynamics, but it doesn't have the kind of aggressive punch to it particularly in the low end that the V281 does. So um, it, it just comes across then as just a little bit more refined and like buttoned up kind of sound, if you will. Okay, now this is not to say that it isn't fun or engaging. It is, it's just if you like an amplifier that's gonna slap you around a little bit, this is not that amp. Okay, other aspects here is 
laterally. So side to side, the holography of this thing is excellent. It has a nice big wide sound stage as Violectrics often do. And it is very clear and coherent and smooth in how it does imaging and separation from side to side. So there is a lot of holography this way, a very good sense of there's a sound here and there's not sound here. And then there is sound here, but then also not presenting that in like a discrete or granular way. Okay. It all kind of like flows together in a very believable lifelike way. There is decent soundstage depth there, but I, I was not blown away by the depth and layering. I would call it good, but probably not class leading in that dimension. Okay. But um, that just, and then like the driver control, like, um, you hear talk a lot about like what is an amplifier supposed to do in an audio signal chain and like the prevailing uh, sentiment out there is it's just supposed to take the incoming signal from the DAC or the preamp and amplify it, make it taller, increase its amplitude, right? Amplitude amplifier makes sense, okay? And I agree that that is one of the critical roles of an amplifier, but another thing that the amplifier has to do is move the headphone or speaker drivers, right? So not only does it have to increase the amplitude of that incoming signal, it has to grab control of the vibra vibrating diaphragm that is either your speaker or headphone driver and make it behave in accordance with that, amp that amplitude or that wave that it just increased the amplitude of. And Vioelectric has always been very good at that. Or I should say lake people in, within their Vioelectric line, but you know, all that. They've been very good at that. And this amp is no ex exception. Like I almost never heard unnecessary sibilance or sharpness in the treble here. Okay, uh, the bass was tight and well controlled and had great pitch definition to it. There was lots of texturing to the sound and all of that. So a lot of like fine level control was coming out. There is very realistic attack and decay on it. So it's it got a lot of control on the attack. And then the decays are well timed and well controlled. So the sound is neither like dry or chalky or wet and sloppy. It just, it's kind of, it's pretty natural and believable sounding in its attack and its decay and all of that. And again, all of that is coming down to like resolution and drive driver control. Like it just, it takes control of driver motion. It doesn't do it in a very aggressive, slammy, hard hitting way. Again, it's not devoid of those things. It's just not one of its key strengths. Okay, um, depending on what you plug into it, that is, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, but it's just, it's always in control and making the drivers do what it wants it to do or what they're supposed to do. Okay, um, timbre on this thing is again, it's believable. It's, um, I would not necessarily call it a strength, but nor is it a weakness for the most part. Instruments sound like the real thing, voices sound like the real thing, or at least like, you know, good approximations thereof. But it, the timbre did not come across to me like it can on like, um, uh, for me, like shit's house sound. It just sounds really natural in the timbre. This is not quite to that level, but nor is it far behind. Okay, so then uh, pairings with this thing both in terms of headphones and of uh, DACs in this. So what I, I noticed here is that this amp, I enjoyed it most with headphones that are already very punchy and dynamic in their presentation. So my Utopia, for example, sounded really wonderful on this amplifier. The Utopia is, has a very active, lively, dynamic, hard hitting sound to it to begin with. And this like, tames that characteristic just a little bit, but does not squelch it. So like the sound of that Utopia is still coming through, but it does give that Utopia a little bit extra sense of refinement and for lack of a better word, class, if you will, okay, to come along with it. Okay, but I did really like the pairing of this with the Utopia. Uh, the HE1000 SE on here, I thought was pretty good. Um, I, 
sounded about like it needed to. So the, the, the HE1000 SE is kind of like not super dynamic or punchy, but um, because it's a little bit easier to drive, like those traits come out a little bit more than some of other high, uh, some of high fi men's other models, particularly like Susvara, okay, on a lot of amps. And so that, that came out here. We still had some nice punch and physical dynamics and all of that from the HE1000 SE, but great big soundstage, lots of holography, like some of the strengths of the HE1000 SE coming through there. So that was a pretty good pairing here too. Now, I did not love the pairing of the V550 with Susvara. So Svara is just a little bit more, it is also like a highly refined, a little bit more laid back in its presentation. It can get dynamic and punchy if you put it on a signal chain that gives it some dynamics and some punch. One of the reasons why I keep my Berkeley um, you know, Alpha Series 2 DAC around and the V281 is because they are both a little bit more leaning towards, you know, a little bit more on the higher side of average, if you will, in terms of their dynamics and their impact. And that really helps out a headphone like the Susvara. So if you are, you know, if dynamics and impact are not your traits, your preferred trait, you like a little bit more chill sound, but you are interested in high amounts of control and resolution and cleanliness and refinement, then the V550 can be a good match to the Susvara for you and your taste. But for me, I liked a little bit more dynamics out of Sus, and uh, the V550 didn't quite give it to me. It's not bad. This is an okay amp for Susvara. It's just not my preferred amp for Susvara. The uh, Fostex, the TH900, like the TH900 series is just awfully uh, amp picky, sometimes even more so than the Utopia. And the V550 did an okay job of it. It does a better job of it to my ear than the V281 does with the TH900 um, that I have, but it's not nearly reaching the level of something like what the GSX Mini does for that headphone, uh, for example, even though I think the V550 is the better all around amp than the V550. So there's at least some insight into headphone pairings. Oh, I should mention that the hi zs the 300 ohm Sens, the 600 ohm buyers also sound really good on here. Um, I've probably long since maxed out the capability of those two headphones, but like in terms of this being able to drive those kinds of high Z loads, you're going to be fine. So I imagine that this will also pair well with like an HD 800 S or a lot of the ZMFs that are out there and probably will handle that new mod house headphone. I'm forgetting what it's called right now. Okay. Um, but that one is a uh, high Z and hard to drive and this probably would handle that just fine too. Okay, for DAC pairings, uh, I, again, for critical using, listening, excuse me, I usually used my Alpha Series 2 there because that's the highest end DAC that I have on hand, and this is a $3,000 amplifier, so I really wanted to know its capabilities. However, this amp did clearly show me the differences in presentations between the Alpha Series 2 and my Hugo 2. Uh, right there. So like I could definitely tell that they were different DACs. They have similar characters and similar profiles, but that they are different DACs that have slightly different strengths. Okay. And that came out through the V550. This also like increased its dynamic impact just a little bit more uh, by with using the, the shit by Frost 2 slash 6.4, which has a really punchy slammy low end on it. So um, the friend that I borrowed this from uh, pairs uh, a, an Yggdrasil with it and uh, really likes that. And so, I mean, the Yggdrasil is known for having a very dynamic, punchy, slammy, you know, low end on it too. So I think that you can um, goose the dynamics on this, if you will, just a little bit by having a very punchy, slammy DAC. Will that help a little bit with Susvara? Um, a little bit. I didn't think that the, the Bifrost added all that much more, but I did detect a little bit more. So I think it is at least theoreti theoretically possible, if you will, to increase the dynamic output for a headphone like that by putting a more dynamic DAC pairing okay, with this amplifier. The Black Ice Glass FX also sounded great on here. I did some tube rolling with that. I do have a review coming out for that very soon, I hope. Um, but like all of the differences in the tube rolling and all of that came out very clearly through this amp as well. So like putting that all together, like um, my preference for matching headphones to this is more dynamic, energetic, and active sounding headphones. Okay. Um, and then... 
uh, but it's very transparent in terms of DAC, I think. It really uh, lets the DAC character come through, right? So it is a very neutral, transparent, mostly get out of the way kind of amplifier. All right, let's go do a little bit deeper dive than in the comparison between the V550 and the V281. Okay, so the key difference between the two in terms of their sonic profiles is that the V281 has a much warmer, thicker, and punchier uh, signature and presentation to it. So the V281, like Vioelectric describes it themselves as having a tube-like warmth and presentation with a powerful low end, right? Those are their descriptors for it. And I think that is not just marketing speak, that that is pretty accurate. The V281 is definitely a, a tilting warmer and thicker than neutral, and it does have a very punchy, slammy, powerful and well-controlled, but like powerful, and rounded kind of low end to it. Okay, so those are the key differences in terms of signature. I think the V281 did just a slightly better job with the depth and the layering. So there's just a little bit more uh, sonic or uh, stage depth to it. And I think a little bit more distinct sense of like layers to that depth. So if you think about like a symphony performance, they have rows of instruments in the depth dimension. And that came through more clearly on the V281 than the V550, though not by a lot. It was not a blowout. The V550 is far from poor on that. But I think the V281 is just a little bit uh, clearer and cleaner in that regard. Okay. But that's, uh, then the differences come down to like pairings. I do like the Susvara through the V281. The V281 is not the best headphone amplifier out there for the hi fi men Susvara, but it's a pretty good one, right? It is reasonably good. It helps flesh out the dynamics, gives the, the Susvara a little bit more physical impact than the V550 does and still has a lot of that driver control and all of that. But then like it doesn't sound quite as refined or just for lack of better term, like buttoned up as um, it can through the V550. Though I just enjoy and am more drawn into the music with the presentation of the Susvara through the 281. The, uh, uh, the HE1000SE, I can basically flip a coin between the two amps. Um, the biggest thing that I notice there is just the slight difference in uh, perceived frequency response and the extra impact of the, um, the the V281, the slightly better depth of the V281, but then also like the cleanliness and the low sonic background, like the, the black void sonic background. And again, just the refinement and the buttoned upness of the V550 shows through there. My Utopia, though, I preferred the V550. The Utopia is dynamic enough that the slightly more uh, laid back presentation of the V550 doesn't bother it. And the more refined uh, presentation is something that the Utopia takes well to. And it just, to me, the Utopia sounded really nicely natural, very lush, had a very nice, rich, natural timbre to it. And, um, and it was also very holographic. And the Utopia is an expert at stage depth too. And so its strength there kind of helped the V550 out in some ways as well. Okay, so if I wanted to listen to Utopia and I have both amps on hand, I would choose to plug it into the V550. All right, uh, and then as I, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, my TH at 900 with the Lawton chambers on it doesn't really like the V281, but it did okay. Not great, but okay on the V550. As far as DAC pairings go for the two amplifiers, I think the V550 is more forgiving of DAC pairings. The V281 minus, say, the TH900 and then the Utopia, which is good but not great on it, um, is is a little bit more of a headphone generalist, I think. Like I have had it for a long time, tried a wide variety of headphones. And my sense is, is that it, for the most part, minus that like one and a quarter exception that I just mentioned, because I do still enjoy listening to my Utopia on this, this amp, but like the TH900 in there. But outside of that, 
it has driven everything that I've ever asked it to drive pretty well and just puts its own little bit of flavor on the sound, just warms it and thickens the sound just a little bit and gives you that like punchy low end to it, but otherwise lets the headphone be the headphone. Okay, my sense is that because the dynamics on the V550 are scaled back just a little bit in comparison, that it matches better to headphones that are already a little bit more dynamic, energetic, and lively. Okay, so I, my sense is that the V550 is slightly more headphone picky, though not bad, okay, compared to the V281. But I do think that as far as DAC pairings go, the V550 is more forgiving and transparent with the DACs and will match better. I have heard some DAC pairings with the V281 that just didn't work very well. The Denifrips Pontus II before the, the 12th anniversary edition firmware update was just so, like that combination with the V281 was just so warm and thick. The V281 did not like the Lampazator Amber 3, for example. And I mean, those are just two examples. There have been others. Whereas everything that I threw at the V550, just the, the nature of that DAC seemed to come through and come through pretty clearly. So I unfortunately have not had the V550 as long to be able to firmly make that claim, but it would not surprise me at all if over time we find that the V550 is the more DAC pairing friendly of these two Vioelectrics. Okay, so let's wrap this up then. At the top of the review, I said that the V550 is a reference caliber amplifier, uh, but it does sound a little bit different than the V200 series, and so it's not a direct upgrade from the V200 series. And I think that is the takeaway here. Like, the quality of output you get from the headphone output here, from the headphone amp section, is reference grade, okay? Black void sonic background, holographic spatial presentation, excellent resolution, lots of driver control, excellent texturing, and all of that sort of thing. If I have one complaint, it's just that from my personal taste, the dynamics, the impact, the slam, and all of that is just a little bit too laid back for my liking, but I like everything else about its sound, okay? Um, and then in the comparison to the V281 then, Okay, the V281 is a little bit warmer, thicker, and punchier. Okay, uh, and I think the V281 will work with a slightly wider range of headphones, um, or match a little bit better to a slightly larger range of headphones than the V550 will, but I think the V550 will work with a wider range of DACs okay, than the V281 uh, will. So, there we go. Reference caliber headphone amp studio neutral kind of uh, signature to it with just a hint of warmth and smoothness added on, a very refined presentation, okay? Excellent product, okay? It is a different sound than Vioelectric has done before with the V200 series, but that's okay. It's good that they offer this option out there for pretty close to the same price. All right, so again, excellent job on this amplifier, Lake People, um, easy to recommend. And so to all of the viewers out there, thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you haven't subscribed to the channel. If you haven't yet, leave a comment down below. Check out my PayPal and my Patreon, and you know generally do those things that you do to support YouTube channels. And as always, enjoy the music.